Welcome back. In the first part of Harry Smith's report tonight, you heard about a man's determination to leave the Church of Scientology no matter the consequences. In part two now, Harry reports on a family who claim they know just how dire those consequences can be. Harry now picks up the story at a crucial moment in church history. Eastern Standard Time. The IRS issued letters recognizing Scientology and every one of its organizations has fully tax exempt. The October 1993. Thousands gather in Los Angeles to celebrate as David Miscavige, the leader of the Church of Scientology, announces victory over the IRS. For years, the U.S. government had refused to recognize Scientology as a religion and was demanding it pay a billion dollars in back taxes. After a bitter legal battle, the IRS relented and granted tax-exempt status. There will be no billion-dollar tax bill which we can't pay. There will be no more discrimination. I think that Scientology has a lot to account for. Because it's protected as a religion under the First Amendment, it is able to get away with a lot of things. Author Lawrence Wright has written a new book out today called Going Clear, Scientology, Hollywood, and the Prison of Belief. Wright says the victory over the IRS allowed Scientology to build capital and power power, he says, the church has exploited. What they're doing is abusing their own members, shaking them down for money, wreaking vengeance on people that disagree with them, uh, punishing its critics, and, uh, and physically abusing people and holding them against their will inside the highest levels of the church. The church will say complaints like this come from malcontents and that they have no credibility. Do they seem credible to you? Well, there's such an abundance of them, and the stories corroborate each other. Stories like that of the James family. The three of you got out. Mm -hmm. We're lucky ones. We got out with at least our immediate family intact. Hayden and Lucy James met in the 1980s, both members of the church's clergy known as the Sea Org. They lived and worked at one of Scientology's main bases located in the desert east of Los Angeles. As Sea Org members, they signed contracts dedicating themselves to the service of the church for a billion years. What was it that made you decide to devote your life to Scientology? I think seeing that I could help other people it answered the questions, the type of questions that probably most people have, you know, why are we here, what are we doing here, what's our purpose, um, what's our relationship with each other. The Jameses say their troubles with Scientology began when they wanted to have a baby. When Lucy became pregnant in 1990, she says she was pressured to have an abortion. I was escorted to the ethics division and then I was put in a room and then a, a gentleman came in and sat down and said, you know, this is wrong you know, you need to terminate the pregnancy. They told you that flat out? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Church officials say that according to their policies, Sea Org members must leave the order if they want to have children because their duties are too demanding. They also say they do not pressure women to abort. Hayden, you're in the room with Lucy. You're looking into your wife's eyes. What are you thinking? Not going to happen. After choosing not to abort their child, Hayden and Lucy were sent to a remote Scientology mission in Birmingham, England. It was 1991. Later that year, Katrina was born. The Jameses spent the next 14 years rebuilding the mission until one day they were abruptly summoned back to Los Angeles. A representative, David Miscavige, showed up and said, you're out of here. We have to come back to the Sea Org. Do you have the sense then that you're back in the better graces of oh, the church? No. no. No, 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 because what we realize when we walk in the building as our cell phones are, are, are taken from us and security makes sure that we can't have any uh, access to the Internet and various other restrictions. And we realize that we've gone, you know, back into the frying pan. Hayden and Lucy were given a room together. Katrina, then in her early teens, was put in a separate facility. We can't physically go over there. So you're prohibited from seeing your own daughter. Yes. What was it like for you as parents to be separated? Horrifying. From Katrina? Horrifying. We were arranged to meet at least once a week on a bench right on the outskirts of the area in which she was. So we would meet early in the morning. In 2005, on one of those early morning park bench meetings, Katrina told her father 
she wanted to leave. I watched families separated. I watched, I mean, there was an eight-year-old child that was with us. Nobody, nobody cared about her at all. She saw her mother even less than I did. Eight years old? Yeah, she was eight. And I had to put her to bed every night crying, asking for her parents. <laughs> just couldn't look at other people's faces and tell them that what we were doing was right. And I couldn't do anything. <laughs> the church says there were no formal restrictions against parents seeing their children. But Hayden and Lucy told the church they wanted out of the Sea Org, whereupon they say they were interrogated for weeks. And then... We were told we had to dump our daughter. We had to get rid of her. So the church in the end, after hours and hours of interrogation, says, you guys can stay but just cast off your daughter. Mm. Yes, and it was worse, you must stay. We're in prominent positions. We must stay, we must get rid of our daughter. Correct. Help me understand this. You're an American. You can walk out that door anytime you want to. Not without everything no. you have being taken away from no, you. No, you can't. It's America, you can just walk out the door. That's true. It's the consequences of your actions that you fear. Y you fear the retribution. Hayden and Lucy say they learned of the consequences in 2006 when they secretly boarded a train to Sacramento with the intention of leaving the church. Within 24 hours, they say the church learned of their absence and coaxed them back. We had two choices, go back or be excommunicated. And so we decided that going back was the best. Because you want to leave on as good a terms as possible. At least not be excommunicated and to be disconnected from anybody we've ever known. So we go back and um, they sort of keep us in a dungeon, what we called the dungeon, which was the basement of that 13 story building in a windowless room. How many weeks are you there? 10. 10, 12 weeks. At oh, night, they say they were taken from the basement to dormitories. Mm -hmm. I, I sleep in a male dorm, Lucy sleeps in a female dorm and there's a guard outside. Do you know how crazy I do. this sounds? I know. From my side of the yeah. table. I mean, it was crazy to us as well. Why would they put a guard on me everywhere I went to go eat? I go into the ladies' room. The guard stands outside the door. It's all intimidation. Church officials say Hayden and Lucy were never confined nor placed under guard. And they say Hayden and Lucy agreed to participate in the Sea Organization's formal process of severing relations with the religious order. The Jameses say when they finally left the Sea Org, they received a series of bills for church services and for what's called freeloader debt for breaking their billion-year contract. The church says any money the Jameses paid was a voluntary donation. How much was the bill for? Hundred and... Hundred and thirty thousand dollars. They provided documents showing more than seventy-three thousand dollars was paid. And that was discounted. <laughs> Yes. They were giving you a deal. Yep. Once they'd left the church in late summer 2006, the Jameses say they were looking over their shoulders, uneasy and suspicious that the church was keeping an eye on them. How did you find out where I lived? No one knew where I, I lived. into your house. Uh, but your, your little cronies have. This is video Hayden took of Scientologist paying him a visit in 2011. You know, like you guys are trespassing, right? No, not at all. We just drove right in here. Well, this is not a public place. I'm asking you to leave, okay? And I'm asking you one simple question. Today, they say their lives are marked by what was always their greatest fear, disconnection from family members still inside the church. Lucy, do you have relatives with whom you cannot communicate? Yeah. Who? Oh. I have um, two sisters. Who are in the church? Yeah. Can't speak with them? No. They won't speak with you? No. One of my sisters is in the Sioux organization, so she's not allowed out. <laughs> and the other one, both her and her husband work for Scientologists. What is it like not being able to even call it's or horrible. email? It's horrible. Your own flesh and blood? It's wrong. I promised myself I wouldn't cry. 
This is what the Jameses say it means to be disconnected. Lucy's sister says she was not forced to disconnect, and church officials say it's up to individual members to decide whether to stay in contact with ex-Scientologists. This is the leverage that's being used so that people won't speak out about the abuses. Yeah. This is what people are afraid of. They don't, they're afraid of this happening, and so they'll be quiet. Officials of the Church of Scientology declined NBC's request for an on-camera interview. But in letters to NBC, they say the Jameses are smearing the church and have threatened a lawsuit. They add that Hayden James is an unreliable source. He is bitter and has an ax to grind. As for the author, Lawrence Wright, church officials say his book is an error-filled, unsubstantiated, bigoted, anti-Scientology book. And they say no independent evidence exists to corroborate claims of abuse. There have been a lot of tears in this story, Harry. And it's been very surprising to me to see how many families have been broken up, how many people have been physically abused. And I think that the, the church has to account for these things. With our thanks to Harry Smith for his report.